right, Luke? Yeah, not bad, thanks, yeah. Everything going... Oh, this, my new look? Yeah, I'm a bad boy now. A bad boy of street racing. I've been playing a game about illegal street racing and... It's my thing now. Wait, but that's not, not a cigarette. I don't... There's no sm... Wait, is that... Is that an eyeliner pencil? Nope. Wait, is that my eyeliner pencil? I've been looking for that! I was too scared to buy cigarettes, okay? Fine, have your eyeliner pencil back for so important to you. These are, these are cheap, you know. You want my cool jacket as well? No, I'm all right. John's putting out his hand as if he can have it. <laughs> oh, Very no, presumptive. Just to catch, to catch <laughs> oh, just to catch it? Yeah. Not to take it for yourself? Nope. Pull the other one, John. It's got bells on. It's staying right here. I've been playing a game called Night Runners. It is the most aesthetic game I have ever played. It's just, just full of aesthetic. It is just <laughs> so full of aesthetic. It's just vibes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's on a, the game, it's just vibes. I will describe the gameplay but it really is secondary to the vibes. Mm. The gameplay is, it's a driving game where you take part in races, win money, use that money to upgrade your car, buy new cars, like, you know, you know like- Yeah, it's like a, every other car game. Yeah, really like, is. it's like familiar mechanics. Mm -hmm. You can walk around your car and, and you know, Wait, look you can get at out of the car? Oh, you can get out the car. <gasps> Andy will love that. Andy will love it, yeah. In certain places, you can get out the car and walk around. Wow. Yeah. To talk about that stuff is to miss the thing that makes this game unique and mm -hmm. so much fun to play. And that's the aesthetic. <laughs> it is channeling a late 90s, early noughties car culture vibe. Now, in the late 90s and early noughties, I didn't like cars at all. <laughs> you're, you're like... I thought they were boring you're and You were a loud. small child. <laughs> I was a small child. Yeah, I couldn't... Well, not that small. Not that small. We don't need to get into exactly how old I was in the late 90s. <laughs> I was not like a, a car person. I was not like no. really into that. You were more into your hobbits and stuff by then, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I want it! <laughs> you read the books before all the films came out, I imagine. What, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's made by a developer called Planet Gem, and it's pretty early on in development. There's a Kickstarter that at the time of uh, recording this is still ongoing, and the uh, release date is like not for ages, but what has happened is the prologue for the game has been released on Steam, so you can, you can play it. I downloaded it, I played it, a few days later, a big patch was released for it, which changed a lot of things uh, for the better. So like, it's very much something that is kind of in the process ongoing, of being yeah. ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Yeah, so this wasn't a, a vibe or a, a lifestyle that I was partaking in, you won't be surprised to hear. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a bit of a fraud now for enjoying it so much, but the vibes are so strong that you just immediately get it. Like you don't have to have been playing PS2 driving games or been doing illegal street racing in <laughs> in Japan to to like get this vibe mm. because it is the game nails it so hard like absolutely nails this vibe to the wall mm -hmm. that you're like oh man I absolutely get this and yes it's it's so beautiful It's got this really crunched down aesthetic. Almost everything has um, a CRT monitor filter. You've got chromatic aberration out the wazoo. Then you've got loading screens that are just like 10 seconds of a, like a lo-fi live stream on YouTube. Yeah, just like, hey, here's a vaporwave loading screen. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. There's like an astronaut, like MTV. And, <laughs> and if you are a car nerd, which unfortunately I increasingly am, there's a lot in this game for you. I gained an early advantage in the game when I was informed that you can open all of the doors and like get in your car and strip out the back seats to reduce weight. Wow. So I like stripped out everything through the back. So I'm like, it's a racing machine. It's a racing machine, it's not a passenger car. There's this kind of car culture thing, especially around Japanese cars, 
where it's not about sexy sports cars. Mm -hmm. It's about like souping up ordinary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. like sort of family sort of tra transport things. Yeah, There's getting a, a nice Honda or a Suzuki and just being like just, lights everywhere. Yeah, exactly. just ab absolutely ripping it. It sounds amazing. The sound of the engines is great. <laughs> And something that is pretty important in a racing game is a sense of speed. When you start speeding up, it is very hard not to lift off the accelerator because it just feels too fast. Mm -hmm. It just feels like calamity is about to approach, which is not something in most racing games. You're like, oh, I wish I could go just faster and faster yeah. and faster forever. But in this one, like the camera's shaking, you can see increasingly less because it's always nighttime and you're always on a highway and you're just like, oh, I'm going too fast, I'm going too fast, I'm going too fast. <laughs> And the fact that a game can make you feel like that, I think is quite impressive. Yeah. And it's all done with, you know, sound and graphical tricks and, and you know, the, the camera angle just basically getting like low, low, low. And yeah. so, so that's really, that stuff's really fun. I haven't played it enough to know if like mechanically it's well balanced or anything, but it's pretty immersive when you get offered uh, like a, a race, a race you can, you place a bet and you can refuse the bet. And sometimes they'll come back with like a juicier offer or sometimes they'll just be like, fine, then I won't bother. Mm. Uh, you know, in the way that the car customization happens, it's like Gran Turismo 7 levels of like picking apart your car and upgrading little bits of a filter and like tiny bits of machinery and stuff. But then in the actual driving, it's much more like arcade, very accessible, easy to pick up. It's not a perfect game in gameplay terms. I wouldn't expect that because it's so... Early build. Yeah, it's, it feels like it's, it's so early build. One big problem that I had when I was doing my illegal night races was that I would lose races all the time by taking a wrong turn. Which, to be fair, is realistic. Because if you take a wrong turn in an illegal street race, you will go the wrong way but in the prologue, it's like, it's all these motorways and highways and stuff. So you're kind of like screaming along. The music gets louder the faster you go. So it's like, and you're like so in the zone and you're like, <laughs> you know, you're like mentally looking over at the other. And then like an exit will come up and the other car will go like, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh no. It doesn't like quit you out the race or respawn you. You have to like find your way to, it's, re it's like dry, it's like, finding your way around on motorways is hard. Aww. It's like hard to navigate. <laughs> There's definitely, I think, s some improvements to be made in terms of just like get ease of getting around mm. um, because yeah. It needs like those old 90s races again. So you have like a big arrow in the sky just pointing you like that way or that way. Well, it, it has that, but you c you've got no way of like getting off of a road that you're on. Right. You oh, so, all... so if you've missed that little arrow. Yeah, yeah. Imagine burnout like a bur burnout paradise or something, but if you couldn't ever leave any road. Because in Forza or something, you just like, you look at the arrow and you just drive. And sometimes you're on the road yeah. and then you're just gonna be like, now I'm on a hill and now, or in Grand Theft Auto, mm -hmm. you're just sort of hooning around out of pavements and stuff like that. Or if you're on a highway and you don't want to be in Grand Theft Auto, you just drive going, off the edge. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just tip your car off the edge. It's striving for a bit more realism than that. So mm. you can't sort of do that. So there's definitely some improvements to be made to the game. For the user experience. Yes, but you just cannot fault the vibes. The vibes. They are just, it's just so, so vibes. Immaculate vibes. The vibes are immaculate. I think what's so cool about it is that the vibes are so immaculate that, and this is what I really love about a video game that just nails a particular aesthetic or is it can be an aesthetic that you weren't previously into. Yeah. But it just nails it so hard that you're like, oh. Oh, I've never seen it in this way now, before. Now, now I like it. Ooh. Now I love late 90s Japanese car culture. <laughs> <laughs> Time to start wash, watching Initial D. I don't really have much more to say about it, to be honest. You can check out the prologue, it's on Steam now. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was a super interesting game just in the way that it is so like presentation forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, if you are like into cars, 
this is like going to be nailed on fun for you. You're going to enjoy, even if the driving is rough around the edges, like just looking at your cars and opening the bonnet and climbing around inside it is going to fill you with delight. But if you're not into any of that stuff, you might be about to become into that stuff just on the basis of how strongly this thing mm. like nails its aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa, we should have never made a PlayStation 3. They did it all right with the PlayStation 2, I think. The graphics are too good now. <laughs> they don't, you can see what's happening and that's not good. <laughs> Night Runners. I'm gonna put on my cool guy stuff again. Yes. I'm putting on this jacket in the least cool way. <laughs> and then Do you know what's a cool? I know how to end this video. With a, I'll tell you a cool way to put on your jacket. You put it on the floor, facing away from you. Open. Facing. Open. Oh yeah, yeah. That, like Open, that. facing away from you. Then you bend down. You put your hands in here, and you just over the back of the head. Done. It's just that easy to put on a jacket.